Okay, so uh, I want to compare the exponential functions with the logarithmic functions. Today's lesson is focused on the log functions, which is 4, 3, and 4, 4. But before I do that, I want to go back and just remind you of the exponential functions and some of its features. So exponential functions would be of the form of y or f of x equals some base to a power. This base cannot be 1 because 1 to any power would just be 1. You get a flat line. You don't get any special graph there. And then it has to be greater than 0. We can't have a negative base there. So um, when you graph this, the domain of an exponential function is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. And that type of graph, you can plug in anything for the a value or anything, sorry, for the x value. And the range, the y values, will always come out zero or above, only positive, uh, zero not included. If that base is a fraction between zero and one, you will get a decreasing function. It comes downhill, like this example two, you get a decreasing function. If that number is greater than one, you get an increasing function, like this one. So those are the characteristics of the exponential function. And then when we do the log function, the x and y all switch places. We, we've talked about how logs are inverses of function of uh, exponents. So everything about x and y will be reversed in that story. But before we do, an example of what I've just said here would be y equals 2 to the x. So plugging in some values for x, uh, first thing that always comes to my mind is plugging in 0, 2 to the 0. y would be 2 to the 0 or 1, the point 0, 1 is actually the critical point or the uh, basic uh, turning point in an exponential function. Plugging in 1, 2 to the first gives you an output of 2, so over 1, up 2. Plugging in 2, 2 to the second would be 4, so 0.24 over 2, up 4 is on the graph. And on and on we could go with that, and it starts getting really high, and you can't, wouldn't be able to show it on the graph, but over 3 is up A, over 4 would be up 16, and so on. So some negative numbers. Plugging in negative 1, 2 to the negative 1, and you can verify this on your calculator, would be 0.5 or 1 half. So back 1 is up a half. Plugging in negative 2 for x, 2 to the negative 2 is 1 fourth, so back 2 is up a fourth, and this story continues this way. You plug in negative 3, it's up an eighth, negative 4, up a sixteenth. It's always up above the x-axis, though. If you never actually touch 0, no matter how negative you go, the output is a fraction. So it's just hovering over the x-axis, getting closer and closer like an asymptote. So that's why the, um, the, the range has a parenthesis around the 0. Very important detail. The range does not touch 0, just 0, almost 0, and then up to infinity. So if it is a fraction, you still have the point zero, 01 on the fraction ones. One third to the zero, anything, any base to the zero power outputs one. So we plug in zero for x, one third to the zero is one. So zero, one, again on this graph. When I plug in one, one third to the first is one third. So over one, this is the tiny side, right? When you go over one, it's just up a third. Over two, up a ninth over 3 up 127. The story is that it gets closer on this side. Um, plugging in negative numbers, one third notice to the negative one would be like saying 3 to the positive one. You know, a negative exponent flips a fraction, so it, it turns that around. So that's like saying 3 to the first or 3. So back one is up 3 back two is up nine, wherever that would be. So this is the tall side, okay? So the curve looks exactly like the curve did on example one, only it's coming downhill. So we say it's a decreasing function. So with the exponential functions, the pivotal point, notice here, the pivotal point is at zero, one. Unless it has the shifting, and you know in your homework you had to shift some of these graphs just like we've shifted parabolas and as such. But you shift it from not the origin. Most of the other graphs that we've talked about, uh, you know, the parabola and the uh, arcs and different graphs, we shifted from the origin. Well, this shift comes from its pivotal point zero one. So when we do example <coughs> three, and I see some shifting rules going on here, I've got a plus one group with the x. 
we have learned that if it's grouped with the X, it's the left-right shift and we change its sign. So this is actually a negative one shift. It's left one, and this is the vertical shift down three. So shifting from the point zero, one, I want to move this graph back one and down three so the graph moved into this area. If you want to be more specific about it, say, well, I'm going left by one, so subtract one from the x value, and down by three, so subtract three from the uh, y value I had. So zero minus one is negative one, one minus three is negative two. The new shifted graph should have a pivotal point back one and down two. But if it's multiple choice, a lot of times you can just tell if it's moved back and down in that, that new area. Okay, so all the shifting rules apply here. If I have y <coughs> equals negative two raised to the x, that flips it upside down just like before. If you have a negative multiplier in front of your entire function, it flips it about the x-axis, flips it upside down. So it'll be down here. I thought a had to be positive. The base, like what, what the actual number here is, but you can have a negative multiplier in front of it. Yes, good question, good question. Um, and that reminds me of another thing I needed to say. On example two, another way you may see this listed in your homework is to say one-third to the x, three to the negative x. So this means the exact same thing as this. And, and again, did you notice that when you're working on homework problems, you had some listed this way as a fraction and some listed as a uh, integer raised to a negative. Same difference. Because the negative exponent means flip the fraction makes the exponent positive. Again, a negative exponent flips the fraction or flips the base and changes the sign of the exponent. Um, also, think about it like this. I'm going to show you the difference, what reminded me to say this. And our basic shifting rules uh, and translations on the graph. If you have a regular function y equals 3 to the x, in comparison to y equals 3 to the negative x, what we've done is everything you plug in for x in this one is changed to a negative x. So what would be on the positive side, if x is positive, is changed to its opposite, so it's on the opposite side of the x, negative x. So it flips it this way, and that's what exactly what happened through the negative x. It made the graph come downhill the other direction. So just changing the x to a negative x in general flips it about the y-axis, so it comes down the other way. If you have a negative here, a negative on the entire function, like we've seen on parabolas, if you put the negative on the outside of it, um, it flips it upside down. It's, it's affecting the entire work that happens back here that, that affects the y answer. So the negative is multiplied onto that answer, which is what would, y would be. So it changes the y solution to the negative. So it flips it down instead of being a positive y to a negative y. Again, so I want you to see that. It flips it upside down, this flips it left and right. So that's your exponential function. So these, this is what you should memorize. And um, you have a handout in your notebook. I um, want to change these handouts actually that had the review of all of the graphs that you need to memorize for this semester. So these are your last four. You've got these two that are exponential. And if you forget any of these graphs, and even if you do remember all the graphs, I still think it's a good idea to point plot a point or two just to double check your work. So if I had this graph on my test, I would just say, okay, let's plug in one and make sure that point's on there. When x is one, y equals two to the first two. So the point one, two should be on my answer that I pick. So make sure over one, up two is dotted into your picture. That verifies your graph. Um, it's good to have an idea of what it looks like to kind of know what you're looking for there, but then also double check. So know that an exponential function with a base greater than one is an increasing function through the point zero, one. If it has a fraction base, still goes through zero, one if it's exponential, but it comes downhill the other direction. Okay, then for the log functions, we're going to switch everything I just said about x and y and do the inverse equation. So here is um, the old exponential function, what I just said. Exponential is y equals some base a raised to an exponent x. 
So an inverse, as we learned in 4.1, switches, switch the x and y around. So it would be x equals a to the y, which just looks weird. Normally, normally we don't write equations solve for x. We rearrange it so it's y equals as a function. So we're trying to make this a logarithmic function, f of x or y equals. So even though this is true, and I could just graph it from this perspective, and it would be a log graph, normally we would rearrange that and write it as y equals. So that, that's a new thing for us. How do we get the y down out of the exponent spot and solve for it? Well, for now, the way we're going to think of it is we're going to rearrange that, um, that notation because what we said about a log is it's log base a, whatever the exponent's base was. So that's the base of the log of x equals the exponent. The answer to a log is the exponent. I want you to really just memorize that from what we said the other day, that when you're doing a log, you're solving for the exponent. And see, that's where we're at on this um, view of it even. So to solve for the exponent, we'll say y would be log of the base, the base of the exponent a, of x is the only thing left to go in that spot anyway, right? That would be the argument of the log. So this is the way you'll see a log function written. And it looks weird with y over here, so I've just rewritten it. y equals log base a of x. And if you'll look up here, these are the two last graphs to remember. If you have a log function with a base greater than 1, it looks like this graph. And the basic point of the log function is 1, 0. Just like exponential with 0, 1, x and y switch places, so it's 1 and 0. And then if it's a log with a fraction base, it's flipped this way and still the pivotal point 1, 0. So that's what I want you to take away, those four top graphs. Try to memorize those shapes in your mind, your last four basic graphs. But say you get this problem, y equals log base a of the x. Know that the domain is 0 to infinity and the range is anything. So opposite of what we said over here. And here's an example. So y equals log base 2 of x, like I said, we know it's going to look like that, but how do you make a t-table? So let's plug in stuff for a y is probably easier in this one. So if I plug in y is 0, that means 2 to the 0, the answer to the log is an exponent, so that's the exponent. 2 raised to the 0 equals x. So 2 raised to the 0 is 1. So the point 1, 0 is on that graph. That's that special point I told you that we should expect. Let's plug in 1 for y. So if I plug in 1, that means 2 to the first equals the x value. So 2 to the first is 2. So over 2 of 1 is on the graph. I plug in 2 for y. That means 2 to the second equals x, which is 4. The x value is 4. So over 4 up 2. And get some negative numbers. If I plug in a negative number for y, that'd be 2 to the negative 1, which is 1 half. So uh, at 1 half, it's down 1. Anyway, you can see how that curves in there. Another way to graph this, how am I doing, Tom? Mm -hmm. 